Hello guys, it's DJ Slope again from Slope's Game Room. Very, very sorry, but this is the November uh, Patreon Q&A. Obviously I'm a bit late, but uh, I've been going crazy editing videos. In fact, I've been putting out three videos a week. And not just like, you know, one big one and one small, and a couple of small ones. In fact, it's actually two big ones, normally a smaller one. Um, yeah, so, and it's going to continue uh, throughout December. This is today's, Tuesday's video. You're going to have another kick scammer and another complete history. I don't even know what it's going to be about yet. Uh, both coming up this week. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I can do it. Hopefully I can do it. But for now, this is the monthly Patreon Q&A. Um, and uh, the people that are patrons of me ask me questions and I hopefully have some answers for you. But today we are doing it slightly differently because I have finally met up with Mr. Guru Larry. So the first two questions of the six that I have been asked, um, each question has several in there, so it's a lot more than six, uh, have been asked by myself and Guru Larry. So I'm going to do a little jump cut here. Blah, 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 blah. And you can go and uh, meet him. I don't know, I should have ended that a little bit better. Here you go. Hey look, it's Guru Larry. Hello. You. See? Hello you. There it is, there but it let's is. Let's go right back to the beginning. That's my one, you met. Oh. Hello you. See, we are the same person. There's we totally not, there's definitely not a split between us and the screen there. There we go, there we go. Yeah, uh, Larry's gonna uh, answer some of my Patreon Q&A's today. Yeah. <laughs> Random people, I'm gonna, you might see a few other uh, YouTubers in this as well, but um. Harry can't be bothered to ask his own, so he's gonna get someone else. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll do it as a discussion thing. As a discussion thing. Tim, keeping it real with a bonte, asks, have you ever tried speedrun glitches on games? If so, which ones? If no, why not? Uh, what is one, uh, he's asked me a few more, more than one question, so. Oh, okay. Speedrun glitches on games? Uh, not really, because I take a lot of practice, to be honest. I mean, you, have to, you still have to learn where to get the go. I mean, I was watching a documentary and the fastest Sonic 2 speed run and that. Yeah. Like 30, 28 minutes or something by falling through the level and stuff like that. It's just so, it's so sort of annoying for me. I'd rather, most of my time I spent talking about games rather than playing them. Mm. But, um, yeah, I don't play as many old school games as I, you know, used to, obviously. But, um, the only time I've ever done it, it, and it wasn't a speed run glitch as such, is I, I used to lie a lot at school. I used to make myself sound cooler than I actually am. Oh, so nothing new there. Then. <laughs> I used to say things like, oh yeah, you know, some kid would go, oh, I've got to the end of uh, you know level one on Sonic 2 in 21 seconds. I'm like, done it in 19. Like, oh no, you know. And then I'd actually go over and try and get it to 19. Like, oh, what, what am I going to do if you ever ask me to show him? Uh, that was it. Oh. <laughs> you know? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. You I did think, ask. I, think, I, mean, I remember doing glitches in games to get fast and quicker as a kid, like uh, uh, Kung Fu Kid in the Master System. As long as you get two enemies on the screen at the time, you just keep walking forward and no more enemies would come. Yes, and uh, down the tubes on Earthworm Jim, actually. Um, you got, um, what was it? Yeah, Bob the Killer Goldfish and the Big Gorilla. I can't remember what the gorilla's name was. But basically, every time the gorilla was on the screen, if you walk slowly, if the gorilla walks on and just walks off, you carry on walking, he's gone. He oh, just okay. disappears, that sprite's gone. And you can just keep doing that. So you don't have to keep jumping up and getting over him. It was a little glitchy thing. But just weirdly, I tried doing emulated and it didn't work, but it definitely did work on the Mega Drive. Like revision or something, they worked, found it. Maybe, maybe. Um, what is one thing you regret not getting video, ga uh, video game, he's talking about when you was younger? Uh, I've, I've... Samba de Amigo for me, actually, no, I did try and get Samba de Amigo, the box set. I spent £100 getting that, and then, you know, a month went past, and I'm like, we got it in, oh, it's just coming in, it's just coming in. A month, another month, I was just coming in, rang up, Lime was dead one day. Gone. What, Company stop, had gone, stored gone. Hastings, is it? I literally don't know. It was at the back of a, a Dreamcast magazine. Oh, okay. The company, but, uh, that hurt. I really wanted to play the game, and to this day, I still don't own Samba de Amigo, oh, okay. which got, is a bit I, of a... I just bought about five copies of the bloody <laughs> Pretty gutting. Well, um, borrow my one if you want. Maybe. Yeah. I'm doing a review on it, actually. I've got the Maracas as well. Complete history incoming. Yeah, I've got the Maracas as well. Well, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is it much better than the Wii version? Yeah, because you've got the Maracas. Yeah, no, but surely the Wii version's like late, newer technology. Well, it does, since it's got the rattle, yeah, and that, that yeah, plays around with the little edge over there. 
Yeah. I, I mean, you couldn't even get some sort of terry plastic thing to put around it to do the maracas. Yeah. Remember, like, remember when uh, with the Wii first came out, you could have a little golf club, couldn't you? A little plastic yes, golf yes, club, yes. A little, little plastic baseball bat. I actually, when I um, was at, that was right at the heart of the Wii and the, obviously the DS craze, I actually was at college at the time and I needed to find extra ways of making money because, you know. So, I, you sell Wii? Yeah, basically. I set, up, I set up a, uh, a market stall selling <laughs> Wii and DS accessories. Like, you got any games, mate? Nah. Uh -oh. No, but you can buy a 5p stylus if you want. Yeah, I was you like, can that's, that's buy a 4p markup for me, that was. You could uh, buy a little bit of a <laughs> golf club. Yeah, yeah, I sold the golf clubs. I, I, I've actually no, got a tennis racket as well. Yeah, I had a tennis racket. I've got like stupid amounts of guns, ones that you push and it pushes the A button on top, and another one that pushes the B button underneath. Oh, that's quite clever. Mmm. Um, good old eBay. Yeah. Oh. I made that my job for about half a year. Oh, okay. Is that, oh, so that's why you've got that. That retro game deals or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was something I used to. Yeah, something I was gonna try and do for a little while. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so I, what I stopped. happened? What happened to your empire of weird attachments? Well, no, I was the only person doing it basically, and uh, there must then, be a reason for that. But I made, I made an alright amount of money. I mean, I definitely didn't earn like a full time wage, but I yeah. DJed as well. So with those together, oh, okay. I, I would, I would literally <laughs> DJ Friday night at a, a restaurant, and then I would leave the restaurant because you know restaurants finish at eleven, twelve, whatever. And then I'd go to a nightclub and DJ there till two in the morning. And then I'd um, do it again on Saturday night. I would DJ uh, at another club, and then I'd finish at three or four in the morning, go home for one hour sleep. Wake up, go to the boot fair, do my thing, and then be destroyed for the rest of Sunday, basically. So, was it quite popular, the boot fair? I'd make, I mean, I don't want to put a proper figure on it, depending on which one I went to. It's like five year. pounds to put up a stool there, isn't it? As well? yeah, 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 something like that. But I mean, at the height, I'd make maybe a hundred pound profit. Well, and then at the, yeah, and then at the lower end, I'd make maybe 40, 50 quid. So anywhere between that, yeah, 70 quid, I suppose, was an average. Something I did back in the day, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but any games you missed out on when you were younger? Any games or That's systems? Well, you're all systems, I suppose. Oh, no, I wish I had a Turbo Graphics when I was younger. Turbo mm. Graphics CD and that. Then again, we never, it never really came out over here, so, so we got denied that. I think I wish I had an Amiga earlier as well. Yeah, I wish I had an, Yeah, I wish I did, actually. I remember a friend of mine having one, and I remember seeing that and being quite impressed by it, but I was so focused on whatever console my mum had got me, which was the type, well not console, the Amstrad CPC, mm. that anything else, even if it was better, I was just like, what is this? I remember seeing an, uh, a Master System and playing Alex Kid and uh, Pengu and games like that and thinking, it's crap, it's crap. And obviously it wasn't, it was good, yeah. you know, but I was so loyal to the Amstrad. <laughs> it was the same with the Mega Drive, you know, anyone showed me a SNES, I'm like, get that away from me. So do, what about the GX4000, do you want one of them? I didn't even know about it until, like, maybe 10 years ago or so. Oh. I didn't know anything about it back then. I used to buy the magazines. I, I must have seen adverts about it, but I don't remember it. Okay. I don't remember it at all. Um, I do remember, I don't know if this is like, you know, one of those like memories that you're, you're sort of making up or if you actually did. Mm. I feel like I remember seeing for sale um, Echo the Dolphin, that special edition with the t-shirt. If I did end up ever seeing that, I wish I bought that, just because that's an impossible thing to find nowadays. Stupid money that goes for. Oh. That would have been nice. I remember at a car boot sale once they had a somebody was selling a coffee table arcade machine. Oh wow! That had two crew, uh, not uh, it had um, Dragon Ninja in it, and they wanted fifty quid for it. Oh wow! Yeah, I wish I bloody bought it. God. Well, I didn't have fifty quid. Fifty quid was a lot of money in the night. <laughs> it so, was. Yeah, that was. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Can get that, put that under the tarpaulin outside again. Well, <laughs> the rest still, of your arcade no, machines. it wouldn't have to be in there because it fits through the front door. So. Oh, right. And that could actually be your, your dinner table, couldn't you it? You could like, do that, yeah. Play a little game in the middle, you know, <laughs> pour in your gravy. Um, he did ask another one. Uh, yeah. for, oh, for example, I regret not snagging the NES and Sega items during the beginnings of eBay. Yeah, okay. that was it. That was the only question he asked, but there you go. Do you know the majority of sales on eBay when it first started were nothing but Beanie Babies? Really? Basically, Beanie Babies made eBay popular. Really? Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yes. Is there a video in the works there? There is actually, yes. Yeah? Like a, I thought about doing some rise and fall of sort of numb gaming stuff on my channel. Are you doing that with someone? Kim. Yeah, I thought yeah, you was. I was about to say, because I feel like there's someone else that might be jumping on that um, one, Larry. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I sent her a book of it a couple of uh, months ago and actually got, she got really addicted to it and we were talking about it. So sort of do I... Yeah, and it's like, like I said, it's, nobody's ever done it, but it's a really interesting story about how it rose. I completely asked that. 
Oh, I'm, I'm interested. I want to do. I want. Bloody hell, look at that question. I don't think we can do that one. Uh, <laughs> too bloody long. long. Too long. Creamy you. elephant. Um, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested in doing a similar sort of video on pogs. You know what I mean? Like the rise and fall of pogs. I was obsessed with pogs and tazos, obviously. When I was younger. No, yeah, Love me some pogs. Never got into tazos because you have to eat all those bloody crisps to get them. And well, I was a naughty boy. Oh, you naughty. <laughs> Yes, no, I, uh, I quite like Pogs, I was really into them, but I got into them from series two onwards. I had a whole series two, the world tour ones, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, I remember Do you someone... Do the metal ones? Uh, what, the Slammers? Yeah. Yeah, I had a load of Slammers, yeah, yeah. I remember actually, because you had another company, didn't you, the Slammer Jammers. That's it. That was, that was, well, they, they, get that away, that's peasants, Pog, fucking Pogs, Pogs that is. Pogs weren't the uh, rip-off, they weren't the original or something, it's like... Some, really? Yeah, some Hawaiian company. Well, no, I thought that was what the Pogs came I from, because I remember... There was, def def there, was one, there was definitely one, um, and it was uh, Pogs come from the, the bit, of plat bit of cardboard you get in the top of a... Yeah, 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 that's where it come from, and... That's it. Because uh, somebody tried to turn it into a cartoon series as well, there's like a pile of Really? Ah, oh, see, this is going to yeah. be a good episode. It'd be like the first thing on my channel that's not got something to do with video games. Apart from all the Disney stuff. No, I'm still trying to put video <laughs> games in there. I'm trying to shoot all them in. <laughs> Should probably continue doing that one day. Yes. Maybe. I'm up for doing the... Uh, Wreck-It Ralph, is it Wreck-It Wreck Ralph? Ralph. Yeah. Oh, a long way to go. Yeah. It's, it's taken over a year for me to go from whatever the last one was, what was it, like Jungle Book to Robin Hood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's a video. We'll try and get it in this lifetime. Look forward to in the year 2023. Should we yeah. answer a couple more? Yes. All right, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do Creamy Elephant. And he's, oh, long. He's, he's actually, and there's only three in there. These oh. might not make any sense. If you don't know, guys, Creamy Elephant is probably the, well, definitely the, 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 the person that speaks the most in my Discord chat. So a lot yes. of these may be in jokes that... It looks like you need to learn how to use paragraphs as well. Absolutely. So, <laughs> stop, crim uh, stop criminal scum. You have been arrested for being a sexual deviant. You share a cell with the protagonist of the last video game you played. You plan your escape with said character and must use all of the following items. A rope, a skateboard, an exploding pen, a rubber duck and a tomato. How do you do it? That's a bit of a ridiculous question. <laughs> well, it is, because the last game we played was that Creepy Brawlers, wasn't it? So. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the last game we played was this one, which, uh, review incoming. Um, unless it's already been up. Review. X coming. X coming. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so, who, who was it? The, I can tell you exactly who it was, actually, that was going to help me get out of prison. Hmm. It was either going to be, because we only got to two people, because we we're not that good at the game yet. I don't think, it, I don't think he's, the character's got a name. No, he has Decomposer Bulldozer. Uh, no, no that's, no, that's the name of the first enemy in the game. Yeah, that's who we went up against, wasn't it? Oh, no, is he saying... protagonist, a character. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I suppose this guy could punch his way out. Now we've got to try and work out a way of adding all those things in there. Uh, a rope, a, a skateboard, an exploding pen, a rubber duck, and a tomato. Look, how are you going to add that into a yeah. story? Can you, just, can you just ask us what your favourite game is? Yeah. Oh, look, I'm just going to go with that. That guy on the front there, the guy in blue, uh, him, he's going to get us out of prison. Um, yeah. Using an assortment of those things. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you're... Completely went over him. I'm sorry, Mr. Creamy <laughs> Elephant. Your, your question you fought so hard on is completely yeah, I can't wait for him it. to answer that question and yeah. not fuck it up. Um, you're in a boardroom and uh, are speaking to Mr. Sega himself. You're tasked with directing a crossover project with two largely abandoned Sega IPs. What two franchises do you use and what kind of game would it be? Uh, well, until recently, I would have said Wonder Boy, but they've just. They've Pretty much two new Wonder Boy games out, aren't they? Really? Mm, yeah, Wonder Boy would be a good one. Alex Kidd. Alex Kidd. I'd say Alex Kidd is definitely going to be one of them. Yeah. And I want, I want something a bit more new age. Uh, Alex Kidd. I would like to remake. I'd like to make a new Golden Axe game, but using a Streets of Rage two engine. Yes, absolutely. Well, I was saying that the, the Return to Death had a game that was a yeah pretty perfect game. Pretty perfect. Well, how about a Streets game. of Rage two, a Streets of Rage four using a Return of Death Adder engine then? There you go, there you go. But we've got to add some more IPs in there, so we'll really, yeah, really yeah. mess it up. So I say, if we've got, if we're going to have, but you want Streets of Rage two? Me, yeah, I can't. No, it's not Streets of Rage two. Streets of Rage. Street, Streets of Rage IP. Yeah. And if we're going to mix in another IP, 
Why don't we do uh, some like uh, Golden aliens? Axe. Ga- Golden Axe, what in the same one? Yeah, it would work. No, uh, Actually, Alien, Alien Storm. Alien Storm. That was what I was gonna say because I think that'd be quite cool. You got that neon Streets of Rage style look mixed with the you know the mm. the over the top Alien Storm with the exploding uh, <laughs> what is it the exploding uh, uh, me- mechanical guy mm. that you have and all those left of his head. That'd be quite cool. That gold, gold, Golden Axe. Alien Storm, that would well, quite cool. Did you know that new... Medieval, medi- medieval versus Aliens, I mean, that would be quite... That would be pretty cool, that would be pretty cool. But that old Cowboy versus Aliens film yeah. going on, isn't it? But, um, did you know the, the Golden Axe one that, 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 that they were working on that got cancelled, uh, that, that, that there's actually footage of it, that was going to be one that was going to cross over into so many other Sega IPs, but it was going to be just things that are happening in the levels. But they actually said that Outrun was going to be a part of it, so somehow they were going to merge Outrun into this Golden Axe game at some point. How does that work, yeah. um, and obviously there was loads of others. Streets of Rage was obviously going to be one of them. Um, but I don't know whether it was just going to be a reference, or if there was an actually going to be a big part of the game. But there you go, there you go. And the third question from Creamy Elephant. Uh, he asks, let me unlock my phone, um, you, finally. You've got a really crap security thing for your phone. It's like the thing about shh. Shh. <laughs> I could draw a circle. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, I'm going to change it now. <laughs> finally, for a more normal question, are there any kind of videos that you would like to tackle? Complete history, quick what shot, What do you et change your password to one, two, three, four? <laughs> <laughs> Or password, but the the A will be a four, you know? um, or a zero of the O. Uh, but won't simply do due to how overly complicated. So what was the question? The Sorry, I was too busy. Uh, to we'll, we'll do this together for your channel and for mine. So finally, for a more normal question, are there any kind of videos that you would like to tackle? Complete history, quick shot, etc. But but what won't simply due to how overly covered and exposed the game or series is. As always, thank you for the uh, consistent flow of content and for being an all-round decent guy. That last bit was for oh, me. Maybe you should. I bet you wouldn't do one on Mega Man. Uh, that's probably a really good answer, actually. Mega Man would be one. Uh, but then saying that, I tell you what. You're it, thinking of a twist on it. No. Well, the thing is, because I've done all of these games that are not well known at yeah. the beginning. I reckon now that I've got to a stage where people come to me to see that the complete history, I won't mind doing more popular ones. So I'm okay with doing that. I don't want to. I mean, oh, so you're just doing it for the money then? Is that what you're definitely. Doing? I'll tell you what, Metroid. That was a nice little learner. <laughs> well, nobody's ever done proper. No, nobody's really done Metroid. Yeah, but it's an overly exposed series, isn't it? It is, but nobody. It's it's like the third wheel. It's like the Mario or Zelda. So Nintendo. honestly, I mean, uh, you know, you said. Mega Man there, but I reckon there will be a time when you do see a Mega Man complete history on my channel. But Castlevania, um, I'll do it, and I will do that. I've even start. I've even got the intro already written for that. Um, but one that I probably, well, ones that I wouldn't do just because I can't be bothered to sit down and play through them really, and and they are overly exposed. Would be the Final Fantasy series. I'd do Zelda a million times before I do Final Fantasy because there's just so much to cover. It's is everyone. He's obsessed with Final Fantasy, and I know it would do me well, but... Fantasy Star. I'd do Fantasy Star. I would, because there's not, there's not an absurd amount of them. And it's not the fact that I'm trying to steer well, away from really RPGs. Well, there's only four in the online one, so... Yeah. So that's easy to do. But I mean, Final Fantasy, you've got ten, then you've got all the tactics, there's a crazy amount of cameos. Yeah, and there should, there's... I mean, that would be a six, seven hour episode, perhaps. Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no, Final Fantasy's my answer, and... It's a really obvious one, but I don't think you'll ever see a Final Fantasy on my channel. Like, I'm not sure you'd ever see a Zelda on my channel, but um, you're, you're definitely going to see that before I do anything like Final Fantasy. Mm. So, yeah. Hello, all right. Hello, how you doing? I'm fine, how are you? All I'm right? not bad, not bad. Yeah. You're ruining our recording. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, sorry. sorry. You should be ashamed of yourself. Get the cake. <laughs> all right, I'll get her in a minute. We'll get her. I'm busy here doing downstairs. Okay, I'm going to leave this in. Thank I'm not you. cutting this out. That's my mother. <laughs> what about you, Larry? Any uh, fact hunts or uh, games you can't find sort of episodes that. Uh, I don't know, really. I think, luckily, I mean, still with games, Yanks Can't Wait, there's still loads of topics that I can get to do. I don't want to do Horace anymore because you've done, not Horace, you've never done Horace. That is coming up, though. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's, um, I really want to You've do... done Horace. You've done Horace. I've done Horace old... years and years ago, ten years ago. Yeah, you got your face in the, the, the sprite, haven't you? That's right. Yeah, 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 in the thumbnail. Uh, no, it was um, uh, the Amst- uh, Roland. Yeah, because you've done it. Yes. And that was the first thing, wasn't it? The first uh, communication between us. I was like, oh, Larry, check this out. 
and he's like, ah, oh, I wanted to do that. Did Chinny Vision do one as well? Was it? He did. Yes. He did, and that was like my first competition in that regard. I know you thought, oh no, he's done it better. But I'll tell you what, what an awesome channel. Like, you know, like he did a wicked spin on that. I love Chinny Vision. Yes. One of the better ones out there he is. Should Very we leave good. it there then? I think so. Well, um, yes. Oh, I can't think of anything else that I wouldn't really do. I mean, it's just. Uh, I don't, I can't honestly think what no. I wouldn't want to do. Well, the thing is, yours are in like segments, aren't they? So they're like just factoids. Yeah, so it's only right, like little, little, little three minute things. You, know, so. you, you, you don't cover anything that's just going to go ridiculous. Well, that's why, that's why I can't get away with doing really obscure stuff because like, no one will watch because it's only like a three minute video in the middle of something. Yeah. So I do get excited when someone asks me to cover something that's got like, pretty much one game and several ports. Something like, oh my god, I really hope you do something like a choo choo rocket. I'm like, yes, I can do that. I can do that. But when someone says, oh, will you ever do. Mario. About another world. Um, because everybody always talks about flashback all the time. Well, I does. did. It would have to be a while. It's one that uh, I do want to cover in detail. You know, with flashback and fake black, all that sort of thing. But um, I did actually talk about them in the third video I ever did. Is it third? Maybe. That's fourth all right. Nobody ever did. watched it. So you can yeah, exactly. Get away with it then. Yeah, Top Hat said he was going to cover a video lately about the John Ritman trilogy, <laughs> and he goes, oh, "I didn't realise you'd done it." I went, "Oh, you've been looking at my channel. Come on." Come on, Topper. Yeah. Doesn't watch my content. Just says he does. There you go. Top Hat Gaming. Mugging us all off behind our backs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. See you later, guys. I'm going to ask another YouTuber some more Patreon questions. Oh, Bye. Have I got to go now? Yeah, yeah. Get out of your own house. <laughs> okay, so... Uh... Thank you, Larry. Um, sorry we couldn't get to film more. It was, a, it was a crazy busy day. That was the day I went to go see Streets of Rage live, so uh, I had to move on. My fault, my fault. But uh, thank you very much, Larry, for helping me out with that. You see, we are different people. <laughs> right, let's get on with some questions, shall we? Okay, so uh, this one's from Zane Powers, and he asks, Okay, so he asks me this a lot <laughs> in, in, in private messages and whatever. Would you ever do a complete history on Crazy Castle, often with Bugs Bunny, um, the Bugs Bunny series? So I didn't really know much about this, uh, and then the more he spoke about it, and the more I spoke about that, uh, spoke about this with Larry, um, I realised this is the video, this is the series that the Angry Video Game Nerd has done a video on, which probably means I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to do a better job than the Angry Video Game Nerd does. Um, perhaps in the very distant future, I will cover it. Um, I have absolutely no plans to cover it. In all honesty, I'm just being completely honest with you guys, like. It's 100% not going to happen in 2018. It's just, uh, uh, sadly, uh, the way it is. Um, have you read any web comics? If so, what is your favourite? No, no, and no. I just don't read web comics. Um, other than perhaps random Reddit posts with, you know, like all the, you know, the, 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 the stupid face things. I can't think what they're called, like the meme memes and all that sort of stuff. But no, I don't read any proper web comics, sadly. Although, actually, tell a lie, one that I was interested in, there was a uh, sequel, a web comic sequel to the original Super Mario Brothers movie. It's in the, the live action movie. They made it into uh, made a web comics uh, sequel to it. I don't know if they ever finished it. Um, in all honesty, I just know it exists and I looked into it a little bit, but I, don't, I haven't read it yet or anything like that. It was something that I was interested in, maybe a video one day, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can give that as an answer, but I, I've actually not read it, so maybe I can't. Um, the next one he uh, asks, the, final, the third and final question is uh, from Zane Powers. What is the worst video game based cartoon you've seen? Now, honestly, video game cartoons aren't great in general, you know? Um, I I think I actually prefer the crappier looking ones. I, I say crappier, you know, like the 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 the, 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 uh, the dirtier looking ones. Things like the you know the old Pac-Man cartoons when it was um, 
uh, when it was when it was you know done by I think it was done by Hanna Barbera. It had that old school feel, and I was really into that when I was younger. You know, so anything like wacky races. Uh, anything like that just really really caught my attention and obviously that had that that vibe all the way through it so I was into that a little bit but even things like the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons uh, I, I read I watched Sonic X quite a lot but I wasn't that interested in the others I, I'd have them on and then no I'm really not interested even even being a massive Sega fan as a kid I just they lost I, I lost my attention uh, watching them definitely the same with Sonic Underground um, the Mario cartoons I think I watched more than the Sonic ones in all honesty um, uh, but ones that I'm really not interested in, Mutant League Football is probably the one I'm going to have to give you an answer for. I don't care about that, really. And I know I've covered it in one of my previous videos, that the cartoon of it. Uh, I just don't really care about it at all. So, yeah. Mutant League Football, there's your answer. <laughs> this one comes from Patrick Elephant. Is that your name? <laughs> A lot of in, in uh, a lot of in Discord chats going on here. The patrons of mine are part of a Slopes Game Room Discord chat, and, and uh, <laughs> Patrick and Creamy Elephant are at each other all the time. So there's a bit of a joke here. He's um, in jokes here that probably no one else is going to get, but just for them, you know. Uh, he asks, "What's the deal with Creamy Elephant?" <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> What's the deal with Creamy Elephant? He's not creamy, and he's not an elephant. What's up with that? Seinfeld baseline. Okay, um, I don't know, he's not a creamy elephant, is he? And what the hell is a creamy elephant? Don't want to think about that too much, actually. Uh, ooh, that's a bit of a National Geographic sort of stuff going on there that I don't want to look into too much. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with, uh, what's wrong with him, nothing's wrong with him. <laughs> I don't know where the name came from. Uh, perhaps I'll find out for the next Q&A. Next question. Okay. All right, so this one is, what was your first portable console you ever owned? Uh, first portable console I ever owned um, was, was actually a little, it's not a console, but I'll say this one first. That, I had a, a Star Wars, um, it wasn't a Tiger LCD game, but it was probably a Tiger game. But it wasn't, the, you know, the typical standalone Tiger LCD games. I've looked for pictures of it and stuff online. I could never find it. I bought it in America. But the first one I owned, embarrassingly enough, I played on my sister's Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but I didn't own either of those systems. Um, I remember playing through games like Wario, Wario Land on that, and obviously I played Mario uh, and Lost Coins, or whatever it's called, on the original Game Boy and a few other games as well. But I didn't own any of them. The first one that I actually went out of my way to buy myself, which was on release day, was the Game Boy Advance. I was quite late to the party on the handheld side, uh, which is crazy to think because the Switch, because of its handheld mobility, is easily my favourite console of the current generation. And in fact, it's probably it may even be edging its way into, into my top three consoles of all time. It's definitely in my top five, but it may be in my top three consoles of all time, which is insane. I am in love with the Switch because of its portability. The fact that I can play on, everyone, you know what I'm gonna say, but the fact that I can play it on the screen, take it out, take it to work. And I'm not even joking, this is what I do on my lunch breaks like, when I'm not working on scripts for Slope's game room videos. I actually put the, video, the, 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 the Switch on my steering wheel take out the Joy-Cons and there I am, I'm playing Mario Odyssey or you know, whatever it is I'm playing and I love it, it's so good, it's so so good. Um, but yeah, the, the, to answer your question, the Game Boy Advance is my first one with uh, Tony Hawk's and something else, I can't remember, I can't remember. Actually I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little story. Uh, I actually did uh, get a Nintendo DS on import, uh, which came out a few months before it did in the UK and uh, <laughs> Uh, I used to go up to see my then girlfriend, now wife, every um, about two or three weeks when she were, was at university in Sheffield, and I left it on the train. So some lucky bugger got a, uh, a, a Nintendo DS with four games. Um, there was Mario, there was Zookeeper, there was uh, Rub Rabbits, and I can't remember the fourth game. I can't remember what it is. It was definitely those three. There was a fourth one as well. Gone. Gone. Sucks. Yeah, I was a very upset boy that day. Uh, 
Oh, ringing up the train company. Have you found a Nintendo DS? What's that? Oh, it's a game console. It's not out yet. Like, obviously, they're not going to hand that in, are they? Gutted. Gutted. But yeah, first one was the Game Boy Advance. He asked more questions. He also asked, <laughs> um, what is your most guilty pleasure song? I don't know. Guilty pleasure song? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm obsessed with Disney, so you could probably put any Disney song in there, and I'm talking... Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you this one. That thing right there, uh, Date Night at Disneyland, is a, uh, uh, basically, back in the, I don't even know when, what, the 50s or 60s? This was a thing that they did in California. Uh, it's a bit of a romantic thing, but what they used to do is, uh, after the park, you know, close to the normal public, you and your, your, your girlfriend could go all dressed smartly, all nice, and would go to uh, Disneyland in California, and there'd be like a, a cool little jazz band playing, you know, the old school swing music and stuff, and then you can go and watch the fireworks and all this sort of stuff, and it's supposed to be a, a very romantic night, but there is a date night at Disneyland LP, and it is proper cheese. We're talking like um, uh, Jive Bunny covers and things like that, so I'm putting the whole album as my guilty pleasure because uh, it's downloaded, it's on my phone, and I listen to it quite frequently. There, there you go. That's that one. Um, number three, if you could make a Sega franchise into a Monopoly board, what would it be and what ideas would you have? Um, I don't know why Sega just can't have their own Monopoly board. I would buy that up in a heartbeat, even though I own about eight of the bloody things. Um, the uh, Streets of Rage is the one that obviously comes to mind just because there's so many locations throughout the free game, so that makes sense for having all of the Monopoly boards. What could the... you got like the... It's, it's different in America or in, in England, aren't they, Monopoly boards? So I've got to remember, but you got the, the light bulb and the... what's the other one? The light bulb and the... Joanne, do you remember? The water works. So you could have in that the two different specials, maybe, but there's... Yeah, yeah, you can have the two different specials from Streets of Rage 1. You've got the bazooka guy, don't you? The, the you know, the push A and the, the cop car comes along and shoots the big bazooka as the different ones because you've got the one that makes the circle. But Streets of Rage 1, the second player had the better special, the, the better special, didn't they? You know, where it just rained fire. Something, something to do with that there. I have no idea what the four stations would be. Um... Cancelled remakes, I don't know, cancelled sequels even. Um, and then obviously you've got the locations all the way around and obviously the little characters can be all of the characters from, from Axel to the kangaroo, the whole lot. Yeah, absolutely, Streets of Rage. But what I really want is every, uh, all of the main franchises on there, you know, obviously Sonic would have to be the very top one. Um, but working your way back and you know, you, you, I own Jet Set Radio. And it would really mess up the game because you'd have to buy ones that you, you, you don't want as much as, you know, um, <laughs> as another franchise. Oh, my baby's crying. Ah. Jump cut. Sorry about that guys, uh, yeah, I am actually a dad as well, so <laughs> it's probably because I'm shouting so much, but uh, anyway, anyway, I will continue with the uh, with the questions. Oh yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, the Streets of Rage will be my Monopoly board. Yes, absolutely. He asked more questions. Number four, what classic stages would you like to see for a Sonic Mania sequel? Wow, okay, I would, oh wow. Um, well, I don't want them to use classic levels at all. I want them to be all brand new levels, absolutely. But if I had to pick one, oh, I don't know. My favourites were genuinely in Sonic Mania. Um, maybe some. I mean, is it Mushroom Hill Zone? I'm, I'm getting, getting the name. I might be getting the name wrong, but the original Mushroom Zone from the first Sonic and Knuckles. But I don't want them touching that stuff anymore. Lava Reef was always my favourite. Um, the Ice Cap Zone was another really good one. So maybe chuck Ice Cap Zone in there. But Lava Reef was generally my favourite because of the music and everything about that level. I really liked that. And when it went all like mystical in the second act, um, that's generally my favourite. So um, that one, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, I, I don't even want extra levels in my Sonic games, <laughs> in, 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 in future Sonic Mania games, you know. Um, show me a few uh, uh, little throwbacks to them, but I don't want whole levels based on them at all. Number five, what is the most expensive game uh, or gaming item that you own? Thanks as always, buddy. Um, I had up until recently Knuckles Chaotix boxed the Power Edition for the 32X, which I know now goes for about 500 quid, so I sold that a little bit too early. Um, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. 
Uh, what is the most expensive thing that I own now? Uh, I recently got rid of my Sega Multimega. Um, I don't know, I mean, I've got a boxed 32X, completely boxed, which is quite nice, it's probably quite rare. Um, I own Saturn for the, um, the Saturn box, uh, with everything, the controller and everything like that, for the uh, for the Saturn, obviously. Um, Nights into Dreams, sorry, for the Saturn, and that's completely all shrink-wrapped still. I've got a shrink-wrapped copy of Sonic Adventure 2, but the collector's edition of that. Um, I don't know if I've got anything else that that crazy anymore if I'm honest um, I've got a few signed items like I said with my Streets of Rage and a few bits like that which you know for me that's incredible but I don't think it's gonna make the, the make them worth much more than what they already are uh, yeah a boxed 32x I'm sorry to say I'm, I'm not a crazy crazy collector of that sort of stuff so uh, <laughs> sorry but yeah that was Michael Cook thank you very much buddy um, the next question let's have a look here let's have a look here and finally, we have Sin Killer J Takikawa, and he asks, "Do you know why I've called you into my office today?" No. And there you go, guys. This is DJ Slope's November Q and A. I am all over the place because I was up until 3:50 last night editing the Jet Set Radio video, which is doing really well. And as I look here, there are, I still do have. I still do have adverts. Thank you very much, YouTube. Please keep that going. Um, <laughs> it's always a worrying thing for us creators. It really is. Um, yeah, it's doing really, really well. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely exhausted uh, today. I've been putting up Christmas decorations and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah. But anyway, it never stops. It never stops, but I love it. If you want to be part of the Patreon list and ask me questions and hopefully get me on a month where I'm not doing all these weird awkward silences because I'm so fucking tired, uh, then, you know, link will be in the description. I'll probably put something on the screen if it isn't there already uh, and you could be part of it. And do go over to the Discord chat because we've started up this thing now where um, uh, there, there's like competitions in there. We have a bot that calculates who talks in there the most and all that sort of stuff. And I do I do exclusive Let's Plays and um, what else? And, and, and commentaries on my older videos for uh, only for Patreon. Um, so yeah, that's nice. That's nice. But anyway, guys, uh, I suppose I'll leave it there. This is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.